Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, Madam President, fellow Toastmasters, and guests. Welcome to another exciting meeting of Toastmasters for Professionals. My name is Pramod PB, and I am your Sergeant at Arms for today's meeting. Let me read out the Toastmasters Club mission. We provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. To officially start the meeting, I want to note that this meeting will be recorded and shared among members for study and self-reflection. Some parts may also be used for promotional material later. In order to have a smooth meeting, here are some ground rules. Please put yourself on mute when not speaking. Don't interrupt while someone is speaking. Be attentive throughout the meeting. Support the speakers with your warm smiles and claps. And let's have a great meeting. And before that, let me invite a special person who is the president of our club, Toastmaster Catherine Opondo, for her presidential address. Over to you, Catherine. Thank you so much. Good evening, good morning, Toastmasters and guests, and everywhere you're coming from. Will you please give a round of applause to our Sergeant at Arms Promote for the warm welcome and inviting us to the meeting with aplomb, energy, and professionalism. Thank you so much, Ramon. You're most welcome, Toastmasters and guests, to, inter to Toastmasters for Professionals. This is a club where we are growing, where we are learning from one another and connecting deeply. I would like to invite those of you who have not yet chosen to join the club. I see some guests. You will be given a chance to say hello to us. Rafi, you can, you're welcome. Joss, you're welcome. Jiayu, you're welcome. Am I supposed to talk right now? Um, hi everyone. This is Jia Yu. Um, it's my second time joining the meeting. There's some technical issues with the first meeting. That's why I left um in the middle of the meeting. But I look forward to like get to know more about this club. Um, and look forward to hearing from all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jayu. Let's listen to um, Jos. Jose, are you there? Or Rafi Khan? Say hello to us. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, my name is Jose. I am from Oklahoma City. My home club is the Minder School of Business Toastmasters. I saw the announcement online and I figure I'll pop in and learn something and meet some new and cool people. Happy to be here this evening. Back to you. Thank you so much, Jose. It's a pleasure meeting you. Rafi Khan, please go ahead and say hello to us. Hello, everyone. This is Rafi. I am joining you guys from Canada. Um, actually, this is my first meeting with you. I am browsing some other clubs. So based on my experience and the time frame that suits me better, I will decide like um, after a couple of weeks. But it's wonderful to see all the lovely people. Great to meet everyone. Thank you so much. Akansha and Sebasti Sebasetti, would you like to say hello to us? Hi. Thank you. Akansha, are you there? Can you also say hello to us? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, it's actually good morning from India. It's 7 a.m. here. and But it's good evening for you. Also, I just heard that it's Halloween evening for you. So happy Halloween, too. And I'll be seeing you with a workshop in a couple of minutes. So I'll just save my introduction till then because I've been consuming a lot of time in the meeting today. So thank you for inviting me. That's what I'll say. Akansha, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmasters and guests. And for club business, I would like to take a moment 
to just make one amendment to our addendum of standard operations. I would like to inform you club members that we are mandated as club officers to present to you a vacant role that has been filled over time. Our vice president education, Mohan Teneti, has not been able to continue with us for a while. And we have as club officers unanimously suggested that we present to you Dr. Mary Thomas, who has been heading the vice president education committee to become our new vice president. Club members, I would like to ask you kindly, if Dr. Mary Thomas is not opposed, will you elect Dr. Mary Thomas today as your vice president education? If that is the case, please raise your hand or say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. I need to see how many of us have done that. Or if you can't put an emoji, so far that's two of us. Anybody else? Yes, I can see Shukruth. I can see Lydia Kay. Shanda McComber, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Shehaz. Dr. Mary Thomas, you have unanimously been elected to Vice President Education. And I would consider this as an election. Thank you so much, Toastmasters and guests. And that's it for club business. I will now hand over our meeting to our Toastmaster of the day, Shehat Baka, to take us away. Welcome, Shehat. Thank you, Toastmaster Catherine, our club president. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, a warm welcome to each one of you from our club. Thank you all for joining this early morning if you are joining us from the east part of Asia. And thank you for staying late if you are from the west. I'm sure the timing is a little bit off, but this is the only time that helps us come together as a team and uh, across different geography and where we can experience, uh, share our learning and experience with each other. Today, we are going to take a slight deviation from our regular meet scheme. Today, we have an educational session. We'll talk about that in a short while, and then we will be going with our impromptu speaking skills, that is table topics. So if you are working for a company, right, this is that time of the year. What I mean with that is, it's not just holiday season everywhere. It's also your appraisal and evaluation time, where your manager will be throwing you under the bus and they will say, you, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. How do you expect me to promote you? How do you expect me to give you a raise? I'm sure each one of us would have gone through that. But won't you agree? If that feedback from the manager came in a positive and a constructive way, that will have a different outcome. Toastmasters highly encourages members to give constructive feedback. This constructive feedback helps the member or the receiver to actually see what that feedback that is coming from your manager or superior or from anyone else, how how they can take and implement it and probably become a better person. And at the same time, it also encourages the giver of the feedback to share his or her learnings or his or what they want in a positive way so that the message is actually received by the receiver as intended and not in a bossy way. Fellow Toastmasters and guests, today we have Toastmaster Akansha with us. She is a seasonal individual who is here to share her trips, tips and tricks on how we can observe, listen and then give a feedback. So that's where the message comes up. So this particular session is centered around general evaluation. General evaluation in a Toastmaster meet encompasses a lot of things and I can directly say that each of the trips or tricks can also be implemented in our real life. Akansha holds a graduate degree in commerce. She is a certified counselor. She trains MBA and CAT aspirants. She's a founder and director of Nextile Skillset and describes herself as an educational entrepreneur. Wow, that is too many feathers in her hat. But she is also a seasoned Toastmasters. She has held various posts in District 41. 
and she is here today to explain more on giving feedback and evaluation. Please join me in welcoming Toastmaster Akansha to our virtual stage to, to in Toastmaster for Professionals. Toastmaster Akansha, over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, dear Toastmaster of the day, for such a humble introduction. All right. So, how are you guys? I know that it's evening for you. You are already drained a little. <laughs> Must be exhausted for you to work all day and then attend the meeting. For me, it's good morning, but already exhausted because I'm not used to wake up at 7 a.m. at all these days. So, all right. So, first thing that we'll do now before starting the workshop, before doing any business. Okay. Uh, may I request to please stop sharing the screen? Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, please uh, just listen to me carefully. So, in just one word, in just one word, no sentences, nothing else, just one or two words, we will be sharing our honest feelings that what are we feeling at this exact moment right now. So, I call this feeling check-in that I do for all my workshops. So, it is a quick feeling check-in. So, if I take the name of, let's say, Sergeant at Arms, Ramon, he will be saying oh, exhausted, excited, nervous. Death. So, just words. Nothing like I am feeling or so much. So, so just the feeling when I call out your name. Uh, are we clear? Yes, yes, yes. I'm feeling query, curious. Curious. All right. Curious. Okay. Uh, timer? Uh, a little tense after a long day, I guess. Okay. That's an honest feeling. I appreciate that. Uh, Shanda? Um, and please excuse me if I mispronounce your name. It's very new to me. <laughs> The spellings and names. I'm feeling tired. Tired. Uh, Rafi? Um, I am feeling relaxed and curious as well. Relaxed and curious. Okay. Toastmaster of the day. I am. Um, I just woke up, so I'm feeling energetic. Nice. So you had a power nap. Great. Karthik? I would say curious and uh, excited. This is my first uh, meeting to Toastmasters, Toastmasters Club. So, oh, great. great. You'll be having a good time for sure. Mary? Yeah. Happy. Oh, nice to hear. So, it's happy. Uh, Jose? Involved. Involved. All right. Uh, guest Malcolm. Interested. Interested. Okay. That's an interesting feeling. Lydia. I feel great. I'm also happy. Oh, that's good. Table topic master. I feel pleasant. Feel pleasant. All right. Jayu. Uh, I'm I'm feel I, I'm feeling curious. Yeah. Curious. So curious is the common feeling that I would say right now because maybe you are curious, but I'm going to speak for the next forty to forty five minutes now. All right, uh, Sebasti, uh, please correct me if the pronunciation is incorrect from my side. If you can hear me. Okay, we'll move to Sabria. Sabria, if you can unmute yourself and tell us what are you feeling right now? Just a feeling word. Maybe some technical issues. All right, we'll just move forward. So a lot of us are feeling curious. Uh, a lot of us are tired too. Um, but okay, for the next 40 to 45 minutes, let's just drown ourselves in this particular session that why we are here. So whatever the feelings you have right now, We'll be doing a feeling checkout towards the end of the session too. And let's see what kind of change we get towards the session. All right. So this is a general evaluation workshop. Uh, let's just set some few ground rules so that we can have a smooth workshop in that case. Please be unmute as the Sergeant Dams mentioned in the beginning of the meeting. Please be keep yourself on mute. Uh, I will be giving you the clues. I will be giving you the areas to speak upon uh, where you can ask your questions. And we will also have a dedicated Q&A session towards the end of the session too. So if you'll be having any questions, please keep writing them down so that you can ask them later. Uh, other than that, this is a no PPT workshop. 
So I do not use PPTs in my workshop. I prefer to engage with my audience in an interactive manner by looking at their faces, by communicating them in a way that we communicate usually in an offline mode. But there will be a whiteboard. So it will be more like a classroom that I will be writing down stuff there. So you will be looking at how I actually write my evaluations, how I prepare my pages. So I will be sharing that too with you. And other than that, uh, no prompting in between because that really breaks the flow while speaking. You will be having your space to ask the questions. That is for sure. So are we good to go? All right. So telling you the major pointers, the three major parts are, so the evaluation as a general evaluator, you have to do two things. Your work is prior to the meeting and then your work in the meeting. So the role is divided there. And the later part of the session will be around how you can apply the general evaluation skills in your uh, respective profession. So whatever you are doing professionally, how can you apply these skills in that area as well? Also, since I am from a different part of the world, there can be a case that you won't uh, actually understand a word because of the pronunciation or the accent. Please feel free to ask me to repeat that in that moment. You can write it in the chat box. I will uh, be happy to repeat my lines or repeat that word for you. All right. Okay. Let's start with the pre-meeting stuff. So pre-meeting, whenever you get the agenda as the general evaluator, in the agenda, you not only get to know who are going to play or at what time, what role is going to be played, you also get to know that who is actually going to play that role. So you get the name of the team on, <clears throat> you get the name of the evaluators, you get the name of the auxiliary role players. Please connect them prior to the meeting in advance and ask them about a little introduction of them. All right. So maybe uh, I could have reached out to Toastmaster Srihas before the meeting and he could have taken one or two lines of introduction about what he is doing in life. Or may maybe I could have just told him, okay, all the best for the role. So just have a quick catch up with all the role players that you are going to evaluate in the meeting. So that is a good thing to do. Another, you need to create a sheet. Now, why do we need to connect with them? This is a part that will help you a lot with the delivery, which will come later. Let's talk about the content first. So let me share my screen. Uh, please tell me that you can see the whiteboard. I see it. All right. Okay. So before the meeting, if you can create a sheet, basically. Creating the sheet, that is your evaluation sheet. So if you just go to the meeting, start writing down whosoever is coming on the stage, and then you start building your evaluation, it will be consuming a lot of time. Also, if you're writing everything in the meeting itself, you will be missing out on the speaker's content as well at that particular point. And that also means missing out on a lot of feedback areas too. So prepare your sheets in advance. So what I do, I usually keep two white papers. These are your printing papers, A4 size sheets. And let's say this is the front side of that sheet, the first sheet, and this is the back side. All right. So I'm talking about the sheet number one. This is the front side and this is the back side. So how I usually prepare it. So I give, I divide this particular part into first sheet into two sections. So one that consumes about 30% area of the sheet. This is the 30% area and another is 70% of the area. This I keep for SA and the president. Uh, now, since they are not speaking too much on the stage, they do not require a lot of space on my sheet either. So when they are coming on the stage for a very brief time, they need a little space on my sheet too because there won't be any much content to write about them. This space will be given for the Toastmaster of the day because Toastmaster of the day comes again and again on the stage and on an average, they take about 10 to 15 minutes time on the stage. So you will be having a lot of content to write about them, a lot of pointers uh, regarding their performances. So give them the space. For SA, uh, team on, so that is how you're going to divide it. Now you can further divide this team on area into this part. So this is completely up to you, completely optional, that you can write commendations here, you can write recommendations here, 
and any miscellaneous pointers it can be the dialogues of that theme or that they were speaking regarding the theme so you can write the dialogues there on which you want to build upon your feedback actually so all the commendations in the concrete manner in the keywords manner or the recommendations you can write here or there can be another way that suits you that helps you in evaluating a particular speaker so you can divide the theme or section in that uh, area too now after this we are done with the first set of the role players. That is the first half of the meeting that you actually see. Now, when the team watch starts calling the auxiliary role players, now you need to evaluate them too. So for the auxiliary role players, go back to the second sheet and it depends how many auxiliary role players or the leadership role players are there in your club. So let's say uh, in my club, there are four. So it starts with joke master. Give some space to the joke master if you have it in your club because joke master comes on the stage only for one time and they will be delivering their uh, joke in the 2.5 minutes. So that is the maximum time limit for them. So whatever the space they are going to consume on the stage, it will be in just one round. Another, come to uh, the role of grammarian. All right. So like, let's say I can divide my sheet this way, grammarian. And I can give this part to our counter. Now, whatever I want to write regarding the grammarians introduction plus feedback that they will be giving towards the end, that will be written in this particular area. Completely up to you. How do you want to write it? Uh, in which manner it helps you to retain the content from the speaker and uh, in which manner it helps you to look at your uh, written content and then deliver it. So it is different for everyone. So there is a subjectivity here. So whatever suits you here, so you can write in that particular format. There is no fixed format given by the Toastmasters. And this is also, that's how I like to do my evaluations. And I prepare these sheets in the well in advance. So when I say essay, I know that Toastmaster Shivani is going to be the essay. I write their names well in advance. I know who the president is. I know that uh, who is going to be the team what, who is going to be the joke master. I write their names along with their titles right before the meeting. I reach to the venue prior uh, to the meeting, let's say well in advance 15 to 20 minutes. So even if there is a back out, I can well in uh, advance fill it in my sheet, alter my sheet as per that. All right. Okay. So this is the first sheet that uh, we do. Now, coming to the second sheet. We left it at our counter. This is the second sheet now. Again, front and back. You need maximum two sheets. Don't worry. You don't want. Now, we left it at our counter. The last is timer. Majorly, there are these four leadership role players. But if your club uh, has fifth role player, uh, leadership role player, that is the lister, you can add it after the timer or you can put listener first and then time completely. Now, after these leadership or the auxiliary role players, you need to evaluate the evaluators who will be evaluating the speeches of in your meeting. Now, depending upon the number of evaluators, you are going to divide your sections. So in our, case, uh, in our club, it is usually three speeches in every meeting. So evaluator number one, Toastmaster XYZ, evaluator two, Toastmaster XYZ, then evaluator three, Toastmaster XYZ. If you feel that you usually forget the content, you usually forget the names, please also write whom speech they are actually evaluating. So also write the speaker's name right there. It helps you in looking at the content and then delivering it. And last but not the least, table topic master. Now, these are the only roles that you are going to evaluate in your meeting. So preparing a sheet in advance, coming before the meeting and writing down their names it's like getting a template for you that you just need to fill uh, during the meeting if you will prepare this during the meeting it is going to consume a lot of time and you will be missing out on the feedback you will won't be listening to the speaker carefully all right so do prepare this in advance this really helps all right any questions regarding how do we prepare the sheet any questions so far all right. Uh, now, before coming to the meeting, always try to get in touch with someone experienced at the club, especially if you're doing the role for the very first time. 
this is very important because you need to know the nuances of each and every role that you are going to evaluate. So if I do not know that what do I have to look specifically to evaluate a speaker, to evaluate a speech evaluator, then I will be giving a wrong recommendation. I will be giving a wrong feedback or something that won't be really useful or productive for the speaker coming on the stage. And any feedback that does not add any kind of value to a speaker's speech, to a performance, is no feedback at all. So feedback evaluations, the purpose of the evaluation is that you grow. Whatever you have done today, you grow from that level. And for that, we have to be careful with the choices of words, with the choices of parameters that we are going to evaluate them and have to give them the evaluation that helps them to grow further at whatever point they start so that they are becoming better as a speaker in the Toastmasters and otherwise as well. So do get in touch with the experienced players, get the nuances right about the each and every role so that you are evaluating on the right parameters on the right basis actually, all right? So all of this you have to do before the meeting. Now, during the meeting, you already have this template. Now you just need to fill uh, well, whosoever is going to come on the stage. Now I will be sharing on the content part so when I say get in touch to know the nuances, I am sharing those nuances with you. So you can write them down. You can type it out somewhere to have a look at it. So let's start with the evaluators first. So we'll just talk about the content and then I will also help you how you can deliver your general evaluation in a better manner since we have a good time today. Thank you to Toastmaster Mary. So, all right. So let's start with the evaluators first. So when you're evaluating a speech evaluator, the first thing that you have to look for is whether they have mentioned the objectives or not. So when they call out the speaker, they call out the speech evaluator first. So the speech evaluator at that particular point lays out the objectives that this is going to be the objectives of the speaker's speech. This is the purpose of the speech. So already always look for that whether the speaker or the evaluator has mentioned that those objectives have been met or not. During the feedback, the evaluator needs to mention this. Why? Because every speech that you deliver in the Toastmasters uh, fraternity, it is based upon the pathways. And pathways, every speech has a certain objective. If you do not meet those objectives, you do not complete that particular level. So you will be lagging behind. So at any point, it would, which comes as a strict evaluation, the evaluator feels that the objectives were not met. Sometimes evaluator all, uh, also asks the speaker to repeat the speech so that they can meet the objectives. So it is very important to comment on the objectives, whether they were met or not during the speech. Another, a lot of times, speaker evaluator keeps saying, keeps giving the recommendation and the commendation. Okay, the voice modulation should have been good. Oh, you could have said it better. The conclusion wasn't at the point. Oh, you said it completely right. I really liked your opening. Now you're giving me just the plain pointers. You are telling me what was good or bad, but you had an exact template in front of you. You had a speech in front of you. You're not telling me which exact points made you say that. So when you are saying that you liked something or you disliked something, you're giving a recommendation, pick the examples from the speech. If the evaluator is not doing that, give them in the general evaluation as a feedback that always pick the examples when you're evaluating or when you're giving the commendation and the recommendation. So if I say you could have said it better, you could have modulated your voice note. So you can have picked a speech. You can pick the term from there uh, in the speech. How are you doing? So you can narrate that. How are you doing? You could have stressed that that particular point. So this adds value. I know at which particular point, at which stress point I really need to improve upon. So I get that exact point. That adds value to the speech. So recommendations, commendations, always with the examples. Without the examples, they are of no value for anyone. Also, a very small point, but a very important point as well. In Toastmasters, we do not evaluate the speaker. We evaluate speeches. So when evaluator comes on the stage and they start talking about, okay, the speaker did so-and-so, he or she was so-and-so. No, you are going to evaluate the speech. So just evaluate the speech. And there should be no references of the past speeches or the past performances of the speaker in that manner. 
so in a club it's a uh, in every club it's a usual tendency that we always compare or we always say okay the speaker did really well this time or the speaker has really improved i have seen your previous performances no your evaluation is about that just one performance that they performed on that particular day if there is any feedback that as a friend that you feel that they have improved upon please communicate them outside that evaluation area as a friend only not in that evaluation all right now this is for the speech evaluator for the table topics evaluator you particularly you uh, you do the same thing the only thing that you have to be careful about the td speakers that you follow the same pattern of the evaluation for each and every speaker the only mistake at times a tt evaluator makes that they adopt a different pattern for different speaker for speaker 1 they will be doing a crc approach for speaker 2 and 3 they will be going into just the commendation commendation approach or for speaker 4 they will be picking up a very different uh, approach which they have devised themselves so a same pattern needs to be followed for the evaluation of all the speakers so whatever it is it has to be same throughout so that i can build okay what actually the evaluator is saying how the comparison has been made what are the good and bad points exactly if there will be a variation if it will be like this it will be very difficult for me to retain the exact feedback coming from the evaluator so maintain that monotonous or uh, maintain that pattern in your evaluation right so we are set with the evaluators any doubts uh, to this point let's move to the right. let's move to the leadership role players so you have your joke master you have your r counter you have a grammarian timer and listener in some clubs too the first thing please notice that how much time leadership role players are actually taking on the stage now a lot of people still do not know this but the total time of the leadership role players is the introduction and the feedback combined so it's not 2 minutes or 2.5 minutes for the introduction and then 2.5 minutes for the feedback it's the combined time so the total time that they have on the stage is 2.5 minutes divided between the introduction and the feedback so if you see that they are consuming a lot of time or the timer is not keeping a tab that way give this as a feedback to the timer that they he or she needed to show the cards that way all right because if the we are taking so much time we are not following the agenda and that uh, won't really help us in conducting a professional meeting in that manner the timings are there for a reason all right so it is important for the timer to keep in that for the leadership role players always check are they giving any tip to the in the feedback so the timer comes and says okay someone has consumed so and so time these are the gray zones the grammarian comes and say these are the good usages these are the bad usages our counter comes and says okay i have put them in this this zone this person used 5 to 10 fillers they used 1 to 5 they used 10 to 15 all right this is a report what you are telling me this is a report this is not a feedback the feedback is you tell me what i did incorrectly and you then give me a tip so that i can improve upon it so a lot of times the leadership role players do not give that tip they just give a report and they leave the stage so encourage them to leave with the tip for example our counter can always say okay you had so many pauses instead of using ums and ahs you could have uh, took a little pause there and smiled you won't be using any filler words you could have just chosen to smile in that case for the grammarian there can be you could uh, use in a tip uh, let's say okay just read newspapers carefully it can be any tip on the word read newspapers carefully look for the sentences look for the minute things or i am will be sharing a word of the day in the group and we can start building the sentences on it so that we can learn better that can come as a tip the timer can also give a tip to the audience how to manage the time there are enough stuff on the internet upon the time management they can just google it and pick something before the meeting when they are preparing their feedback or write in the introduction so it's not like they do not have the content they should be encouraged to look for that particular content and that has to be done by the general evaluator all right so coming to the joke master completely performance based there are no rules to evaluate the joke master just look for the words that they are not offending anyone 
no one was criticized too much by their jokes no one was hurt by their jokes otherwise the joke master role is fine completely performance based and completely up to you how you want to evaluate them the joke master area is completely free that way just look for the offending areas if there were none praise them it is difficult to do a joke master to make people laugh for 2.5 minutes so joke master's evaluation should always be on the encouraging side even if there was one punch there was one giggle in the 2.5 minutes please understand we are not the stand up comedians here it is difficult for uh, people to come on the stage and also make people laugh at the same time coming on the public speaking stage so always encourage them and they look forward to it now coming to the table topic master when you uh, start evaluating the table topic master first look for the technical parts whether they mentioned the rules of the table topics or not whether they mentioned the timings of the table topics or not it has to be reiterated by the table topic master as well in addition to the timer now for the table topic master you need to comment on the topics nature that has been chosen by them so whether the topics were too simple for the audience whether they were too complicated that they could not even build any kind of content upon it so sometimes uh, they choose topics with difficult uh, complicated vocabulary or some idioms and phrases that you cannot really comprehend well which are not used commonly by the people so such kind of topics are not really encouraged in toastmasters for the table topics so the table topics the topics for the table topic needs to be simple so something like what motivates you in the morning it just it's just a impromptu speech so what motivates you in the morning sometimes take you 30 to 40 seconds to even think about okay what actually motivates me so even that gets difficult in the, when you are asked to speak upon it impromptu so keep the topic simple the innovation is always welcome you can do a sales pitch you can give them a product and ask them to sell that so the innovation is always welcome but the innovation should not be at the cost of the quality of the topic again so always welcome the innovation always encourage them to go for the creative side of the topics but at the same time look for the areas that are we compromising on the quality of the table topics because of that if that quality hasn't been compromised all good if that has been compromised please tell them to improvise upon that area and maybe look for other innovative ideas that keep the topic simple and keep the sanctity of the table topic session as it is what right? i so good okay now coming to the toast master of the day someone who consumes a lot of time on the stage they come make multiple entries they are basically like the host of the meeting yes very important a lot of people do not know that in when we say that the toast master of the day the toast master of the day is not another speech role so what a lot of toast masters end up doing they build a lot of content they write a long script and they are just uh, after delivering that script in the most precise or in the most elaborative manner that they can they choose two technical topics like taxation economy at times and they start delivering a lecture upon it they do not interact with audience at any point they do not ask any questions they do not mingle in the meeting so there is no involvement as such and as an audience you start feeling uh, start getting bored after a while as a team mod they are the host of the meeting just like the host of any award show that you watch so their role is to engage with the audience with their theme to pick themes which are more involving in nature which are more engaging in nature which are maybe more humorous in nature now this is the point that they can apply a lot of creativity and innovation they can bring some tags they can tell people in advance so in one of our meetings uh, one of our members told that you are going to be this particular animal in this meeting and that entire meeting was around those animals and their voices and everything so we were communicating or we were calling the people according to those animals voices and at the same time the person did not consume a lot of time on the stage either because he did a uh, pre meeting stuff so we decided the roles well in advance so you can always do that the purpose is engage the audience make it audience friendly so that they feel more involved in the meeting they start feeling more interested in the meeting so when you see the award shows the host is interacting with the audience so that's how it is completely 
for the essay and president for essay simple whether they are mentioning the rules uh, one is the rules and the mission statement if there is any incorrection any mispronunciation with the uh, mission statement please point that out because mission statement needs to be pointed out needs to be reiterated in the manner that it has been laid by the toastmasters we cannot make our addition deletion in that particular one so look for that mission statement and whether they are mentioning the rules or not because as an essay that is your duty well in the advance of the meeting for the president just look for the points the president address is subjective how they want to address the audience but one thing that they have to do is it has to take the guest introduction well in the beginning so if they have missed out on the guest introduction so give them that as a feedback and the overall feedback of the meeting when you started if you started 2 minutes late 3 minutes late please note that that if your time is 6:45 and you are starting at 6:48 please tell them we started 3 minutes late but later it was covered by the toastmaster of the day so that is fine so you have to give them the reward even if it is 2 minute late keep it on the lighter side if it wasn't too much but if the difference is too much let's say 10 minutes the meeting was supposed to be started at 6:45 but you started at uh, 6 uh 55 or 7 then a huge difference and at toastmasters we keep the timings because we consider it a professional space so that we are conducting the meetings that way so that lags the entire meeting that affects the role players the rest of the role players their roles that might affect the role of the team or as well whatever they have prepared they might have to cut it short so it creates a ruckus in the entire meeting if you're starting late or someone is consuming a lot of time so please keep a tab on that and tell them that all right now this was about the content that on what parameters you will be commenting upon or what are the areas that you will be looking for now let's talk about the delivery part i know what to speak but how do i speak actually how do i deliver it in a manner that audience listens to me because i will be speaking for a long time general evaluation is going to evaluate a lot of role players so why should audience listen to my evaluation in that manner so one thing that you gave them is a concrete feedback in terms of content so when you will be giving them things that they can actually work upon they will be listening to you so once the content is done now when i told you that do the pre meeting stuff to with all the evaluators and take some introduction from them in one or two lines so when you call the evaluators do not just call them okay the next speech evaluators is going to be toastmaster pramod you can always say one or two lines about them what are they doing professionally or some cheeky thing about them going with the theme okay the next person i am calling on the stage likes this particular movie and for so particular reason or their favorite food is this so and so so you can always do a little introduction for them do not go into the long introductions because that again will consume a lot of time and you will get less time for your general evaluation section so one or two liner introduction for all the role players one it makes them feel more personal in the meeting more involved in the meeting so when you're called by a name just a name it's like okay i'm called upon the stage but when you call me with an introduction of mine with some dislikes likes of mine i feel more involved okay i want to do its role okay they have called me really nicely so i feel a little more happy while doing that evaluation too so that is a nice thing to do for every speaker for every role player that you are calling on the stage just remember that you are doing this for all the people you are calling on the stage in that case do not make it like that you did it for the speech evaluators but you are not doing it for the only role players do not make them feel unwanted in the meeting all right now during the meeting what should be the skills that you will be working for you one active listening you can't be the one who is doing the cross talks in the meeting who is engaging in the instagram side by side looking at the reels no you can't do that so active listening has to be there you do not afford distractions at any point now the observation skills the very important skill for the general evaluation the observation skills now it is a matter of subjectivity because some people have really good observation skills so if i am speaking even one word incorrect they will be picking out that so they will be picking out that and i am saying this because i am that kind of person 
So after all this year, I have become that with, with the evaluations and the net picking that I can even uh, pick out the expressions and I even comment end up commenting on the how your eye movements were. So I even give the evaluation on that, that, okay, you, when you were saying this dialogue, your eyes were looking in that particular direction. So you need to improve upon that. So now this is a complete, a different level of observation skills, but at some level, you need to build some observation skills so that you can observe speakers well. And you can do this, uh, how you can actually build upon that. Uh, what I will say from my experience in the field of public speaking for 20 years now, whenever you are going anywhere, so you're going to a part, you are sitting at home, you are visiting your office, instead of just uh, putting uh, the earplugs in and just getting lost in the music, maybe sometimes, not every time, sometimes start observing the environment around you. Start looking for the shops that you cross, start looking for the people that you cross in the way, start looking at their behavior, how they are actually acting. If you're taking a ride, a train ride, maybe start observing the person sitting in front of you. Do not stare at them. That would be too bad. But just an observation. You're watching a movie. You have watched a movie for 10 times. Now you're just watching it for the fun. So you already know what the dialogues are going to be. Maybe now evaluate them or now look at the other expressions that they're delivering in that particular movie. We can do that, this with our favorite movies at any point of time. We can do this for our favorite shows that we've already watched multiple times. So that's how I actually build my observation skills to up to a level that I do not miss anything now. Sometimes I do miss if I'm really, not really engaged, if I'm not really focused uh, uh, in the meeting. I have a lot of things in my mind, but mostly I do not end up missing on that. So this is something that will come with a lot of experience and a lot of practice in general as well outside the Toastmasters. Now, when we were talking about that, how can we apply all of these skills in our profession? So I am an educator by the profession. I actually teach people for the MBA exams and everything. Now, when I say I have become a good general evaluator or a decent general evaluator, people say that how is it is going to help you in the evaluating or teaching particularly. You are teaching for a competitive exam. You're teaching for an entrance exam. But there is a difference. When I started doing the evaluations in the Toastmaster, when a student came to me for the feedback, my feedback was not like, okay, you have done this incorrect. You need to improve upon that. I was a little soft on that area. So that, that CRC approach, commendation, recommendation, commendation. So that sandwich approach really helped me to give the feedback in a concrete manner and to look at the points that I was not looking earlier. Now, CRC is not the only approach that we can follow. It is a suggested approach, not a mandatory approach. You can go with another uh, evaluative approach as well. But CRC is recommended because it is more on the motivating to outside. You can always go for the another one. Too. So when the speaker or when the receiver feels motivated by my words, they tend to feel work upon it even with more enthusiasm and more energy and with a more positive perspective. And when they work out with a more positive perspective, they end up delivering good results. So if you have your uh, subordinates with you, you have team members with you, instead of just saying them directly, okay, you have done this incorrectly, just giving them a one-liner, okay, you need to, uh, build upon that I did not like that maybe I can say okay this is this looks good uh, however what we can do is if we'll do this uh, maybe we can take it to a next level so that is what we gain from the evaluations we learn how to mince our words rightly we learn how to communicate them to the people rightly that we are interacting with even personally especially personally your friend comes to you they start sharing their feelings with you and you give them a one-liner, okay, your feelings are not valid at all. Whatever you are thinking is just blah, blah, blah. And they feel so disappointed with you that they do not want to talk to you again. It can happen with your spouse. It can happen with your children again. But when you learn how to evaluate in a motivating manner, in a more encouraging manner, again, you pick the right words. You first tell them, okay, I like this part. However, we can do this. Do not use the word but anywhere in the evaluation. So when you say good things about someone and you say, but you can do this, but negates every good thing said by it. So even in the evaluations, look for it. If the speech evaluator is using the word, but for you uh, coming to the recommendations, it's not, but it has to be another transition words, like however, right? However, you can take this. 
All right. I'm not negating whatever I said. Otherwise, no good points are of the value. All right. So that is how the general evaluation really helps you in your role. When you are in the uh, speech area, especially in the management side, you need to be really careful of the words. There are people or those are your subordinates who will be putting a distinction uh, about their managers. So some managers are called bossy. Some managers are called friendly. There are some managers you really want to talk to. And there are some managers that you really want to avoid. And you just abuse them when you're in the free time and you're sitting with your spouse, your friend. And trust me, you do not want to be the kind of manager that receives a lot of abuses even behind your back. You really want to be a kind of manager. You really want to be a person the people look up to for listening to you and to encourage them in a manner that they actually build upon something. You want people to look up to you as a manager. So whatever you are doing, whatever in the field you are, you are in a in an area, you are giving feedback to someone in some or the other manner. Now do this role a lot more often so that you can learn how to build those sentences. And you will only learn that by coming more and more on the stage. You do not learn this just one, by one workshop. This is just a template for you. This is more like a theory for you. The practical will come when you will actually be doing this role. So do it more often so that you can learn more often on the stage. Right? Okay, so let's open the floor for the Q&A. If you have any other question regarding any other role as well, I would be happy to answer. And even if it is regarding in general on the public speaking skills, communications, I would be happy to answer that. Can I ask you a question? Sure, sure. Uh, okay, so uh, first see, Adil, uh, then Toastmaster of the day. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> when I uh, joined first time uh, in a club in Pune, uh, Toastmasters Club in Pune, uh, I was informed that the presidential address is not covered in general evaluation. And I've seen the same thing in most of the other clubs also. When they do general evaluation, the president's address is not covered. Is that a convention or it is something that a club follows without having yeah, like any... I said, uh, like I said, when you are evaluating the SA, SA and the president, so presidential address is subjective. Whatever they choose upon, so that is completely up to them. So that is why we do not really comment upon the presidential address. We just give a look for the one thing that whether they are welcoming the guest or not. So we always say that, okay, your president address was good, uh, but he did not welcome the guest or he did not take the introduction. Most of the time they actually take the introduction. So it's one of the rare times that they forgot or they are in the hurry or something. So just give them a soft evaluation on that. We do not comment on address. We comment on the things that they have covered. So that is the norm. Uh, yes. Hi, Akansha. I have two questions for you. Uh, one is like, if we have many recommendation or commendation, where do we limit just to make sure that we are passing the right feedback? And the second is, how much time do we need to spend in our evaluation for each role place? Okay, that's a very valid question. Thank you. Uh, so for the speech evaluators, uh, when we are doing a particular speech evaluation of 2.5 to 3 minutes, we say that three commendations and two recommendations are fine. That's a good way to go. So if you're following the CRC approach, it's three commendations and two recommendations. Uh, if the speaker is new on the stage, you know that in your club. Okay, if the speaker is new on the stage, we sometimes limit it to just one recommendation as well. For the icebreakers, we say that do not give any recommendation or give them a soft suggestion. So when you're not giving the recommendation, you can always give the suggestion to the speaker. Suggestion comes more like a free advice. I can keep it I can, but recommendation comes as a strong point. So when you do not want to give the recommendation, you can always give them the suggestion. So for the icebreakers, it is always the suggestion in that manner. Because them coming on the stage for the first time, that is being applauded more. Because that is a difficult step. Now, as the general evaluator, the same thing applies to you. For you, it is not like that you are going for the three recommendations and two recommendations for each speaker. There, at times, you have to engage in a critical evaluation as well. Some people do not perform the role well, or uh, let's say in one of my meetings, the team would end up taking almost an hour. So we started with the Toastmaster table topic section, uh, 50, uh, 20 minutes behind our time. 
which ultimately affected uh, our general evaluation section because I ended up doing a general evaluation in merely 25 minutes. I only got that slot. Whether it, uh, when it should have been around 50 to 55 minutes as per the agenda. So it affected the entire meeting. So I told the Toastmaster of the day in that case, okay, this was this, these were your good points very quickly in a more of a keyword manner that, okay, these were the things that you did right. Always start with a commendation. Always start with a commendation, whatever approach you are following for the evaluation, always commendations first. And then I gave a strict evaluation upon the recommendations part. For that particular person, my recommendations were on the higher side and there were no uh, particular limits. So it was more around the time that you could have managed your time and how she could have managed her time well. I gave her those pointers as well that she could have looked for those points. So for the general evaluator, there is no strict rule for the commendations and recommendations as such. But for the speech evaluators, do look that they are not giving more recommendations as compared to the commendations. It has to be three to two is the ratio no matter how much you dislike the speech. So that is the thing about the Toastmasters when we say there is a positive environment, so it has to be maintained that way. General evaluator has the liberty, but keep it a little balanced. So commendation, recommendation, keep it a little balanced because you give feedback on very small points. So you're giving the grammarian a point, let's say that word of the day wasn't used. So nobody used the word of the day. Maybe it was a complicated one. So maybe look for a simple word next time so that everyone can use it in the meeting. Everyone can build a sentence around it. That's a very small point. So I won't even count it as a major recommendation either. Not something picked up from her speech. So for general evaluator, it is like that. Okay. Uh, what was your next question? <laughs> Forgot. You're on mute. So when we are doing the general evaluation, we are evaluating many rules. So yeah, the time. as a general evaluator. Yeah, yeah time. Okay, so the time for you, uh, whatever is mentioned in the agenda, so the general evaluation section from the point that it uh, starts, you already know that how much time the feedback is going to be taken by the each role player. For speech evaluators, you know that they're going to take three minutes maximum time. For leadership role players, you know they're going to take this much time to build the report. Just uh, subtract that particular time from your entire section and given in the agenda. And the rest of the time that you have is completely your time for the evaluation. If the meeting is starting late, if there is a long break, you will be getting less time. As I said, as per the agenda, I had 50 to 55 minutes. But when the break got over, it was a special meeting uh, anyway for us. I got only 25 to 28 minutes. And that included the feedback of the all the other role players. So I was delivering my evaluation into 3x <laughs> YouTube speed. So that is a joke in my little joke in my club right now that I speak at such a pace level. So I did the evaluation in that state. So sometimes such situations arise too. So whatever time is in the agenda, minus the time of all the feedback the other role players will be taking, the rest of the time is completely for you. If you have more time, go into the detailed feedback. If you have less time, go for the surface level feedback in that case the major major point and give them the detailed evaluation later personally yes mary thank you. thank you for your wonderful general evaluation workshop my question to you would be we're all professionals here i would like to know how do we manage time during our non toastmasters meetings for example corporate meetings most of the time they're draggy and they waste a lot of time for the staff and other subordinates. How do we manage time for corporate meetings? That's my question. Okay, uh, this requires a long answer and I would say another workshop on the time management. So actually, uh, uh, there are uh, full length workshops on the time management for the corporates. So, which where we actually talk about these things that how do you manage time in a corporate space? Because the issue that you are mentioning is not just with you, I'm telling you. It happens at a lot of companies and most of the companies that the meetings keep dragging and no one is interested to listen to anything. What you can take from the Toastmasters right now, just for a quick feedback on that, you can start preparing an agenda like we do for our meetings. And whosoever is heading that meeting, there has to be one person who is leading that team. That person has to make sure that we are following the agenda. A person has to be a little bit strict that way. So there's a difference between a little bit strict and rude. The person doesn't need to be rude in order to implement the agenda. 
you just need to be a little firm that we are going to follow these timings and the team your team is listening to that so the firmness has to come from the leader if the leader is failing to usually fails uh, to implement that then the entire team will be taking it for granted for sure so if i as a leader i as the trainer of the workshop say oh okay it's fine i am doing the general evaluation you will be doing the general evaluation what's the point but i if i am firm with my words if i say that okay you have to do this right you have to look for these points you take it more seriously okay this is something serious that i have to do now so on a quick way what we can do here right now is build an agenda and try sticking to it and whosoever is the leader let's say you are the leader in your next meeting and you want your meetings to be on time the entire one hour slot on be on time you can start being more firm with the team do not be rude again once again start being more firm that okay we have to follow and tell them the uh, importance of time that we are going to lose out on many of the things because of this if you want to follow this so give them something that they really want to listen so we as a manager or in the corporate spaces what happens we keep telling people okay if you're not doing this i'm writing in your evaluation you won't be getting the appraisal everything is linked with your salaries with your performance and appraisals or any terms that we are talking to business we never tell them that if you're doing this incorrectly how it is affecting them personally too so if you're dragging the meeting you're not talking about the business it is wasting their time too whatever time they are investing in the office it is wasting their time too so always tell people what they are losing out on so this is more like a psychological thing tell them that what they are losing on tell them what uh, what is going to be their disadvantage before telling them the disadvantage of the company as a whole or you as a leader tell them what they are going to lose so when it comes to me okay my time is going to be compromised i'm not coming here office for this and i can do so and so more stuff then i will be more interested to listen to you and pay more attention to the timings aspect so these are some of the quick pointers that you can apply but again time management is something that requires a complete workshop because there are a lot of tools that you use to build that time management so there are mind mapping tools and other tools uh, there are some creative hacks or some of the theories that have been talked about a lot of entrepreneurs in the past so we discuss them in that time management workshop and that's how we see that okay how well we can manage time so takes a lot of space actually uh, yes abriya okay hi uh, madam trainer how <laughs> much of a question i'm oh, sorry earlier because i was on the phone and was trying to get in earlier okay my question is how that a general evaluator okay i have seen this happening the role player were yawning and stretching and stretching they really, really stretching do we touch on this because it happened to me and i at the end of the evaluation i only to say in general i say in general that if you need to yawn or stretch you may want to switch off your video that's what i say in general so is that allowed do we touch on that yeah yeah Thank absolutely you. absolutely since we are in the online space if you are just hooked to the screens right now it's not an offline space so if i'm yawning if i'm doing any inappropriate gesture you are just seeing that it just dis discourages the speaker who so ever is speaking so let's say if i am speaking and all of you are doing something i won't be interested to speak to you anyway yeah so that is something you should really give them a soft suggestion whatever you are doing it's absolutely right my second so, question can i ask another second question okay. yeah, my yeah, second sure, question sure. let's say um if they drag on the meeting and there is very limited for us the gen evaluator we touch on the basic thing but do we make sure that we try and finish it on time we as a gen evaluator so that you might end up with like three minutes or four minutes because we don't want to yeah, drag on so yeah okay? you need, really need to leave on the time so whatever just uh, come building on to the uh, answer that i gave to the toastmaster of the day so whatever yeah. time you have been given in the agenda please stick to that you as a general evaluator can't be dragging the meeting so if you are getting the less time limit your evaluation talk about just the important points and give them a detailed evaluation personally you have to finish the meeting on time so let's say your meeting finish time is uh, 7:30 pm or 8 pm so you give back give the stage to the president at 8 pm 5 minutes here and there if you have really got your role late it, it is an exception 8 or 5 okay fine that is done but mostly the president will be on your head okay end it end it end it end it so you just end it yourself so do not give them an opportunity so it's eight in the agenda that you have to give it back to the president give it back to the president 
because we can't be commenting or we can't be telling everyone that you could have managed your time well and at the same time we are dragging the meeting so that's like <laughs> countering ourselves only so that is the answer yes shakti you are raising your hand for a long time no it's fine it's fine uh, it was mistake only okay okay all right so do we have any other questions It's not necessarily a question, but could you provide an example addressing an experienced Toastmaster that is making mistakes? Perhaps they have gotten complacent and you as an evaluator notice this, but you need to address it. Can you give an example of how you would approach that situation? All right. Uh, for an experienced Toastmaster. So does it happen with you that uh, it becomes difficult for you as a new member to evaluate an experienced toastmaster because you feel that they can't make many more mistakes does it happen that way feel that way no certainly for me but i want to see like all their experiences of how uh, you would tackle that situation particularly if perhaps this person is very experienced but is lacking and this is something that i've seen in other organizations as well and you need to kind of call them out i personally do not have a problem doing so, but I would like to have more skills about using different techniques that perhaps you can demonstrate one or two. So when I joined the Toastmasters in November 2019, uh, I was quite new to this particular platform for sure, but I wasn't new to the public speaking format. So I started speaking on the stage at the age of seven and I'm 27 now. So there has been no gap in between. So it's 20 years that I am on stage in one form or the another. But I was new to the Toastmasters. I was a new member here and evaluating the experienced members started taking a little bit toll on me in that manner. Even if I'm speaking correctly. So let the way you say it happens at the professional spaces too. If I'm giving them even a critical feedback, even a good point, it wasn't appreciated in that particular manner because there's always a thing that, okay, you're a new member. How can you tell me like that? Or happens at the office spaces too. Okay, the new employee is going to teach me something. I am here for so and so years. I'm always doing this correct. But if you are at a space for a long time, does not guarantee that you are doing things correctly too. So that needs to be pointed out. Coming to the Spruce Master specifically in that case, when you are the general evaluator, for you, there is no new speaker. There is no experienced speaker. When we say that we are evaluating the speech, just the speech and not the speaker, even as the general evaluator, you are just evaluating certain role players in that case. For you, it should not matter whether that person is an experienced role player or a new role player. You won't be commenting on that, that this performance is better than your previous performance or you are an experienced Toastmaster, so you could have done this better. We do this often in Toastmaster. Okay, you were an experienced member, so I expect this from you. You have done this correctly. It is a wrong way because we are judging the performances given on that particular day, on that particular time slot only. So keep it out of completely out, out of your mind that I am going to evaluate the experienced one here what I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the role players and if they are making some kind of uh, comments or that requires the recommendations I will be giving them the recommendations the way I give it to everyone else what I need to work upon in that case if I am rude I am rude for everyone if I am polite I am polite for everyone so that is going to be the case. That will be a general comment that can come from me, from the entire audience. Okay, you can be a little soft with your evaluations. But that won't be just for one speaker. I won't be changing it for one speaker. So even if it's a critical evaluation, I will be going with the polite and the encouraging side. I will be doing it for the everyone. I hope that answers your question. Shakil? Yeah, just one, last, one little uh, short question. Uh, when uh, regarding time management, it's, it's a challenge to just conclude your speech uh, at the end. Uh, what's the tip or short tip you can suggest? Uh, so to conclude you're talking your speech. about the seven minute speech or the evaluation of that speech? Uh, in, in, in any speech, you can say. Rather, okay. it is evaluation. So general... For evaluation, if you have to give a challenge. Yeah. 
So as a general evaluator, you do not have any time limits. So you do not have any conclusion sort of or take away or you have to not have to follow that format. So you are free that way. Uh, if you're doing a speech evaluation for three minutes, you are giving the commendation, you're giving the recommendation, and then you have to conclude your speech. Make it a point one. This is again, something that comes from experience and coming a lot of times on the stage because you will be making a lot of mistakes in the beginning for sure. Whenever the green cards come on the stage, green card is shown by the timer that is a clue for you to go towards the recommendation side all right so the green card is shown that is a clue for you to move towards the recommendation the yellow card is shown it is a clue for you that in the next 10 to 15 seconds you need to summarize your speech now whatever you are saying about the recommendations it's time to wrap up the yellow card will be shown it's not like you will end your recommendations right away so yellow card is there. I'm not going to block my sentences. You will be taking 15 to 20 seconds in order to wrap up your recommendation. So those 15 to 20 seconds and rest of that uh, area in the yellow zone will be used for the summarizing. And if there is a takeaway from that particular speech, so sometimes there are takeaways. So I always appreciate that if you have a takeaway, please uh, mention it to the speaker. In addition to your, okay, I concluded that. Overall evaluation is this, you did this well. However, if you could have done this better, it would have been a perfect speech today. And now the biggest takeaway from your speech for me was whatever their intention was, the topic was, or the key message, just reiterate that. Something that I'm taking home. So coming thanks to the managing time, take a clue from the cards. Take a clue thanks from a the lot cards again. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. Just do it more often so that you can time your sentences as per the cards. It will take some time, but it won't be difficult. All right. So any other questions, if at all? Actually, I think we are out of time. But okay, okay. thank you so all much right. for your workshop. Okay. You, uh, Mary has my contact. If you have any kind of questions, so you can always pass on to her or you can just add me in your group if you have, there are too many questions. So I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you so much for having me. It was a wonderful time here. I hope you enjoyed. Okay, let's live very quickly. Feeling checkout. How are you feeling now? One word, very quickly. Very quickly. More very energized. Very energized. Okay. Learn Demon. new things. Learn, Learn new, new things. things. Great. Enriched. Okay. Enriched. Okay, happy. Always happy. 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 Okay. She has. I would say it's motivational. Evaluate to, from the from the line you said. Evaluate to motivate. Great, Rafi. What's your feeling? Check out. Um, I would say I'm a little bit uh, educated today. So educated, yes. All right. All right. Anyone who wants to share another, Karthik. I said enriched. Enriched. All right. Yeah, you said that. Ashanda, just close that. Awake. Awake. <laughs> All right. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, if you haven't said your feeling word, you can just type it on the chat too. So we'll hope to see you with another workshop sometime, maybe on the time management as Mary given us the clue today. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you for having me. Thank you for inviting me. I had a great time. Thank you, Mary. Thank you to Smasar Akansha for taking time out and spending another one hour of your precious time this morning with us. I know it is a bit early, but we all, as you see, as you heard from everyone, everyone is feeling energetic, motivated, educated. So that's what we are looking for here at our club. Uh, so just to wrap up, uh, or just to to basically, from your speech, we basically learned that we need to connect with our role players. We should understand the nuances of each role player that we are planning to uh, evaluate. Then we should always give instead of giving a report, we should give a tip that will help the uh, role player or the individual improve engage in active listening no distractions and a lot more now one thing that i would definitely like to call out is we should not mince word and communicate better and evaluate to motivate thanks a lot for sharing all these tips i'm sure like each of us if they take one or two they'll definitely become a good communicator and an evaluator now, without further ado, let me invite Postmaster Shukrut, who is our Table Topics Master for the day. And he will be engaging with us with his Table Topics for another 10 to 15 minutes before we call it a day. Over to you, Toastmaster Shukrut. Thank you, Toastmaster of the day. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. 
my dear fellow toastmasters and guests table topics help members practice the art of improvisation and also helps us think on our feet so since we are toastmaster try and provide a speaking opportunity to maximum audience members this time this session is not restricted only to members even guests can participate before before we begin i request the timer to call out the timing guidelines for the table topics round of course hello members and guests i encourage everyone to participate in this part of the meeting once toastmaster chukrut gives you your topic or question speak for at least 1 minute and at most 2 minutes if you have not finished by the 2 minute mark don't feel forced to stop speaking abruptly but start wrapping up when you get to 1 minute i let you know by showing you the green card and when you get to 2 minutes i let you know by showing you the red card i begin timing once you start speaking so feel free to take a few seconds before talking to think about your answer i look forward to hearing from all of you and back to you toastmaster shubhran thank you timer okay let's begin who will be the first volunteer may i i see yeah yeah please your you. topic is your table topic is what makes someone a hero what makes someone a hero okay uh, am i audible yeah um, may i begin okay long time ago once upon a time on a bright sunny day two friends were in the hospital one friend's mother was in critical condition in intensive care she was having special attention of the doctors he was very nervous literally very very nervous well he was just looking for help and praying to god please god save my mother's life suddenly he receives a call on his mobile ting ting hello yeah how are you john yeah i am fine how is your mother she is really fine can i come over for any help really yeah but you live very very far from my home and hospital in fact now it's hospital very very far one and a half hour drives i can come let me come is there any help needed well it's not like that i will manage you have to bother driving too much well just i can come to just talk with you spend an hour with you talking with you on what's happening in the world do you know what's happening nowadays it's really fascinating things i want to share with you really but you have to bother coming to me one and a half drive our drive well i can come well brother it means a lot you have said me hello toastmasters and distinguished guests this is a real life story do you know of whom it's the real life story of me i am shakil khwaja back one and a half or three years ago my mother was ill in hospital my friend just called me do you need any help i said no don't bother uh, coming and just uh, putting you in, in your pain well the words he spoke my friend spoke i am ready to come just to spend time with you just to share a few things with you meant a lot do you know the amount of courage and motivation i got from my friend it's a real life story of mine means a lot we should always try to help each other not through money just few encouragement words my friend was a real hero in my life i will recommend all of you to help the humanity in whatever way you can remember one thing it's not the money you need to help each other it's the amount of courage motivation the amount of powerful words spoken to your friends and family members means a lot over to you table topic master thank you shakil that was a nice one 
So who will be the second volunteer? Karthik, please, could you? Uh, yeah, I can try. Though so this is the first time for my two spot. Please what feel free. Your topic is, what is your favorite fictional story? What is your favorite fictional story? Uh, let me take a few seconds to recollect my thoughts. Uh, my favorite fictional story, I would say, is uh, something like Batman trilogy <laughs> movie. So the core essence of any fictional story which attracts me is that which demonstrates the ground reality without uh, much of drama. And the ground reality needs a correction. And from the ground reality, a person who generally observes all the uh, things, dreams of correcting it, gets himself equipped or trained, and then rise above the situation, rise above the odds, rise above all the challenges, and then finally correcting it and through this journey, he loses a lot or uh, he gains very little. But once in the end, the immense satisfaction of accomplishing what he dreamt, that sort of fictional stories is what uh, attracts me and reminds us my favorite fictional story. Uh, that's it. Uh, Thank you, Karthik. I see our sergeant red arms hands up. So, are you in? Uh, yes, if time permits. Yes, yes. Your topic is what makes a person beautiful? What makes a person beautiful? So let me, uh, Toastmasters and guests, let me start with a beautiful quote by John Keats, I guess. It is, beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. So what makes a person beauty is definitely the actions of a person. So your actions define your inner beauty, your outer beauty. If you really want to have good actions which can impress people, then definitely you need to have good thoughts also. Because your actions are originated from the thoughts that you create in your mind. Think about a person who is thinking a lot of good things about the world, thinking of the wellness of all the people in the world, but not doing anything. Would you be able to understand that the, the person has got this much fitness inside his heart? I don't think so. So I strongly encourage people to think positively and implement something which is positive in their mind so that the outer world can see those things and uh, inculcate a habit or they can try to imitate. And there is nothing wrong in imitating good things which you are seeing everywhere in the world. Even in Toastmasters, what we tell people, we tell them that this is a good speech, this is a good evaluation. You try to do the same way. It is imitation of the beautiful things in the world. When you imitate the good things that you see in others through your actions, you become so beautiful and others will start loving you. The same way, if you do a speech or you deliver a speech which you can inspire people, that itself is an action. Through your words, you are inspiring somebody else. So as Toastmasters, as lovers of public speaking, as torchbearers of uh, the community, what we can do is we can also spread the inside beauty through our words, tell others that this is how you can also create a beautiful words. So uh, it might seem very simple, but it is not like that. Today, we are all deciding that we will not speak in a way that hurts somebody else. Think about a world. If it is a contagious, this message is going like a viral message and people stop talking something ill about others. How beautiful this world would be. 
तो माय ब्यूटी और द ब्यूटी ऑफ एनी पर्सन इज इन द एक्शन ऑफ दैट पर्सन एक्शंस दैट ओरिजिनेटेड फ्रॉम द प्योर एंड लविंग सोल बैक टू यू टेबल टॉपिक मास्टर शुक्र थैंक यू थैंक यू प्रमोद सो वी कैन हैव अ गेस्ट रफी या या and your topic is what's a quick decision you once made that changed your life okay so um, yeah i mean this will be a pretty tough topic for me to talk about because i do not take quick decisions other than i'm purchasing something pretty small though so let me think for a bit so i think uh, the decision i made when i um it's a long process we can tell you the story so it's the story about me coming to canada so it was not a quick decision for sure but the moment it happened it was pretty quick so uh, the incident was i was just out of my um university and i started a new job and um i felt at one point that it is not what i am i will be doing all the time like there should be much more meaning behind life and behind your journey in, in this world so it was just in a single day that had happened that i need to look at my life in a different perspective and i should try to uh, learn more about other cultures and other societies so then i decided that i would come to um this country and i would i started to explore so it was just a moment just that spark of that moment where i decided that yes i i will not live my life this way and because there are more things to explore so even though there are a lot of process involved in that uh, decision but it was it was that instant moment that i did not have to regret for one second so yeah i mean it was uh, it, it, it's not it's not a it's not a it's not a quick decision or a quick instance but it was just particular moment that i can still remember that i i feel grateful to myself that i took that decision yeah that's all i wanted to say thank you rafi so can we have one more i believe we are nearing the time so maybe next time yeah okay thank you shukrat and i really apologize i saw sabria was trying to nominate herself but we are at 8:30 that is like we in the time but it is in uh, we are steady to wrap up and i just needed to use this time to interact with our guest who are joining us for the first time to share their reflections on our meet today and if they would like to join us in our future meet if you need if you have any questions do let me know so i'll just uh, open the floor to all the guests to, uh, to 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 hear from them on what how their experience was with our meet today so if people are not coming out of mute i'll go ahead and start calling the folks so lydia I, I, thank you for joining us again so do you have any feedback for us hi um yeah this is not my first meeting uh so my feedback today would be it was really interesting to learn from akanksha i think i'm hoping i'm pronouncing that right uh i that's definitely something that i uh am scared about with regard to becoming a member is having to evaluate other people in addition to having a hard time speaking myself i have a really hard time with constructive criticism for other people and giving people feedback so that was really uh helpful advice for me yeah like until you make a decision whether to join or not feel free to join us as a guest 
and maybe mm -hmm. one day you will definitely join us and we will, we will be able to hear your constructive feedback. Okay. I've been talking to Dr. Bowie on email about doing an icebreaker. He said, I don't have to be a member to do an icebreaker. So I'll maybe be okay, doing we'll, that. Sure. I'll, I'll get you connected with Toastmaster Mary. She will help you. You can connect with her. Okay. okay. Shonda, I, you had joined us as a member last week. I'm looking forward for your icebreaker. And is there anything that you would like to share today? No, it was very uh, informative. And uh, being that I have not done any of the roles yet, um, I've only been observing. It was really helpful to kind of put it into perspective what I will be experiencing. So it was really helpful. Great tips from um, our speaker today. So thank you. Thank you, Sharda. Uh, Jose, before we wind up, any suggestion or feedback from your side? Well, thank you for having me. I enjoyed the meeting. Akasha provided some really good information. I, I was really looking forward to getting a different perspective in terms of giving feedback, and I think I got that today. I also had an opportunity to interact with some of you. Thank you for welcoming me. I look forward to visiting some other time in the future, perhaps. Um, back to you. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Jose. Before I, since we are two minutes over, so I'll just take one minute to see if anyone else wants to share anything before we call it a day. Anyone else? Open. Um, so this is my first session. So generally, like a uh, first session with Toastmasters as well. Is this a structure which will be followed every Tuesday, or like uh, there'll be a workshop then impromptu questioning? How does it? Uh, no, this today we had an educational session. So we had a guest like Tosma Akasha is not from our club. She she is visiting as a trainee. Uh, we do conduct educational sessions at least once a quarter or as per what members of our club want. So if someone says that we need a session on topic A or topic B, we, we uh, Tosma Samari helps us get trainer from outside our club to come and share their insights. So this was one of those meetings. A normal meeting, we have uh, prepared speeches, evaluation, and then table topics. And there are various role players who come and take roles. So that was Akansha was talking like she when she divides that paper into multiple sections, there are various role players where the general evaluator being one of the pivotal roles, they come and evaluate. Likewise, there are other, other roles. Each, each have their own roles and responsibilities. Uh, join us next week. Next week, we will have a regular meet that will have a Toastmaster of the day with a theme. Then we will have prepared speeches, table topics, evaluation, and then others, other role players will come, like Timer will come and share his report. Likewise, you will have a grammarian who will be who will be listening us and will suggest on how we can improve our grammar. And they will also tell us how other speakers made good uses of English. So you have all those things in a regular meet. Join us next week and you can experience this first time. Okay, sure. Thank you for all the fellow Toastmasters and thank you, Akansha, for uh, your talk. Okay, so I'd like to just thank Akansha once again for joining us and hopefully we will meet up again for another session. And thank you all for staying back so, uh, so late. I wish you all a good rest of your evening or good rest of your day, wherever you are. Thank you all for joining and we will catch up next week. Thank you so much.